Hello, hi dear children, here again. So here we are dealing comprehension of the poem and writing appreciation. And this time again you are quite lucky you are having two poems. That is lines written in early spring and the ballad of Father Gilligan. These two are only questions which you can expect. Sure bet questions. One for comprehension asking questions. And question pattern you are quite familiar in 9th standard and during this um, some model examination and also the examinations conducted at your school. Online examination. So the first question will be a stanza or two from any of these two poems will be selected. And followed certain questions. Questions will be and as usual questions from the if the questions are where does the poet sit? What makes the poet have very happy? So this poem is from the lines written from in early spring. Usually in this type of questions, for example, the questions usually asked are here, questions usually asked are identify the theme. Next one is identify imageries like visual, olfactory, auditory, etc. That you are quite familiar, I know. And identifying the prosodic features like rhyme scheme and rhyme, rhyming words. This also from 8th standard words you are doing it. And interpreting the lines. This line which may literally have some meaning. At the Moth Towers, for example. Moth Towers means we know that one the, it is a time of moths coming. But there is not a meaning here. Here it is evening or in the dusk. Dawn or dusk is the answer. Prapadamo, Pradoshamo is the answer. Uh, identifying fig, figures of speech. That is usually asked are simile, personification and metaphor are asked. And this poem we are having simile and metaphor. And so uh, don't think about any other thing. Only these two simile and metaphor and personification will be asked. And commenting on the significance and implication of different expressions used in the poem. For example, motavar. It's an expression exactly. Right? And flocks in the ballad. Flocks. That is, as it's believed in biblical sense, the priest is known as shepherd and the people living in that parish are called flocks. So that all, these all things might have discussed in the classroom. So that you have to keep. So regarding that one. And next one is who is the speaker of the poem? That is the poet or some other th person, third person, like that. Pick out the rhyming words, rhyme scheme, I told earlier. And pick out instances of simile, metaphor, personification, I told. Pick out an instance of alliteration. Please, Peter Gilligan. People sound is repeated. That is alliteration. Mavron, Mavron, MM, the normal sound is repeated. So those things and same time assonance also may be asked. That is I, my, I, I, A, A, U sound is repeated in the same line we are calling it as assonance. So assonance and alliteration may be asked from this side. So to steps to answer the question. They're also very simple as you have read in the reading comprehension the prose. Here also read the lines thoroughly once or twice because it's only having only one or two lines, two stanzas only. 
And after that, select a question and search for the answer, same pattern. Here also, no need to write the complete sentences. Write only the correct picking answers only. As you should select another question and continue the same process. It is the easiest way of scoring marks. Another question from this poetry part is usually coming as what? And the appreciation. Writing appreciation appreciation of the poetry. This is writing appreciation. You are just commenting about the poetry in your own words. If you are writing the gist of the poem, it will not be an appreciation. In an appreciation there's a pattern, it's a detailed writing or a creative writing we call it. That's the paragraph. appreciation. In that appreciation, you have to cite which poem, who is the poet, which country he belongs, what's the time, what type of poetry it is. Is it a ballad or a lyric? And how is the structure of the free if it is a free verse, you can write. If it is if you have to write the structure of the poem, that is, is it constructed in stanza pattern? How many lines are there in the stanza? And after that you have to use the theme of the poem. And what the poem tried to communicate, convey to the reader. And after that, prosodic features, as I told, rhyming words, rhyme scheme and everything you can just. After that, we have to check what are the figures which used. And that you can just note down. And that you are simply writing that figure speech only won't do. So you have to cite example also for that one. From the line, you have to pick it. And here the poet is purposefully, you were tactfully using the figures of speech like simile here, a metaphor here, personification here, and then the example also you have to quote. Another one is alliteration, assonance, imagery source. Alliteration gives rhythm to the poem. So whether the rhythmic lines are kept there, that you have to point, examples you have to cite. And after that, the imagery, visual, olfactory, auditory images that give color and it develops images in our mind that you can write down in your appreciation. To conclude, you can write your own opinion. This poem touched me a lot. This, this and all those appreciation you can give. And you can give appreciation to the poet also. In that way, you can conclude Either you can write in the form of a paragraph, different paragraphs. First paragraph is an introductory paragraph. And after that you can write the, these all areas, that is rhyming words, rhyme scheme, theme, and figure, figures of speech, and imagery. And, and after that concluding, you are complementing or concluding paragraph you can. Otherwise you can write a single paragraph also. And don't forget to give a title to it. So that will give you full credit of the appreciation. Try doing it. And what I have done in this material, what we have done is, we have purposefully made a, a checklist or a table of things that is analysis of the poem. There you can see the first column, you can see the theme of the poem, second column rhyming words, and third column is rhyme scheme, and fourth column is figures of speech, and uh, fifth and sixth column alliteration and imagery is given. So, uh, prepare such a thing, if I will copy it from here and try writing by yourself. But while just listening to this talk, you may think it is very easy, but while writing, how to put it in sentences, that will trouble you. And my example is, is along with this one, regarding the poet, the appreciation of the poem, Lines Return in Early Spring. So it will be helpful for you. Thank you so much.